As I grew up, I had access to an 80,000 volume library. And I read from that library extensively about religion, all the religions of the world. And I was really an atheist at that point when we moved to the farm. But things began to happen in the house. My wife, she saw an ad in the newspaper and decided she would go and look at it. And while I was away, I guess I was away for about three days, and during that period, she looked at it, liked it, and put a deposit down on the house. The idea of living on 200 acres in, in, a, in a beautiful home like that was, that's, that's enough to fire you up. It's, it was beautiful. The day we moved into the house it was very chaotic. We were trying to move out the previous owner while we were trying to move in a family of seven. <laughs> so it was it was pretty chaotic. And um, I came running through from the kitchen to the front hallway and into what became our dining room. And there was this man standing there. And as children do, I was just like, OK, you know, sit somebody. And I ran off to play. The house was straight out of the 30s or 40s. It had linoleum on the floor. There was no modern conveniences. Uh, the house was 110 feet long. And just walking it back and forth, back and forth, walking the length of the house, unpacking and getting the children settled. My muscles of my legs started to hurt, and that was the beginning of the pain. It drained my mother's energy so severely that she would sleep in bed for like two years. She could hardly get out of bed. Because it caused her so much depression, too. Fear for her children, fear for herself. Terrible fear for us. I met one of the neighbors, and she said to me, you know when the Kenyans lived here, they left the lights burning in the house all the time, all day long, all night long. And I thought that was kind of strange. But we, that was clarified for us by Mr. Kenyon. He said, for the sake of the children, you should leave lights on at night. When you walk in a house that evil, you know that that house really had very, 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 very bad Vibes. In her day, she was the house of the county, you know, the one that you drive by, and they're like, that was the first house. And that's what she was. And and when the witch and on all these ghosts moved in, they just slowly just chipped away at her, and like the crack showed up, and the veining, and the darkness of the house. We started to absorb the karma of the house almost as through osmosis. We would hear the mournful, pitiful, sad weeping of children in the house. And it was always that one bedroom window, that metal, uh, that middle bedroom window. And it was though she had the window open and was hollering out the windows, mommy, mommy, just wailing. Lorraine came, she was very sweet. She uh, was very gentle with the children, but she started to uh, issue warnings to me. I knew the house was haunted. All I had to do was walk in it. We just had to find the source. My mother did an inordinate amount of historical research on the house. And the reason that she did was not only was she fascinated with the fact that we were living in a 1736 house, but she also knew by the time that we started to see multiple spirits in the house, she wanted to know who it was. And that's when we learned about Bathsheba Sherman. We wanted to get deeper into this case, yes. We definitely, wanted, we, we went up there so many times to try to find the help, to really try to find it for them. But it was, it was very sad. I told her about some of the things that had happened. I woke to the smell of smoke in my bedroom. And then there was Bathsheba. 
this is when she put the curse on me. What she said at the last of it is, next time we meet, ye two be dead. The spirit that was most threatening to her liked to uh, manifest with fire. In that house, we had much happiness and many happy times together, but we had horrible things happen too. Logic tells you that something that is immaterial, that is a shadow, that's a mist, that's a wind that passes by you and lifts your hair, cannot really hurt you. I still feel threatened. I feel threatened. I don't know that I'll even be willing to see the film. In fact, I doubt very much that I will be willing to see the film for the same reason I'm unwilling to ever go back to the house, especially to ever go inside the house again. I never would.